So, step number one, you're on pull the first, or the, technically the second flap there. Step number one says make sure A equals one, which it does for this problem, and move C, the constant, to the other side. So in this case, we're going to move that negative 75 to the right side. So we need to add 75 to both sides of our equation. Now, I'm going to leave a blank space where that 75 left the left side because we're going to use this idea of completing the square. Um, so we're going to end up filling in that blank. Okay, so we move the constant term to the other side. Step two, okay, the next flat says divide B by 2. Okay, we're just going through the process of completing the square. So B now is um, negative 2. We divide that by 2. We get negative 1. And we're going to square it like we've been doing. Okay, we're completing the square. So we get 1. That becomes our new C. We're just completing the square like we have. Now, we're dealing with an equation. We have to keep it balanced. So if we add one to the left side, we've got to do the exact same thing to the right side. We've got to add one to the right side as well. So we worked through step three. So just to recap, we have moved our constant to the other side. We have completed the square on the left side. So we divided B by two. We squared it, we added it, okay, exactly what we just did with those 12 problems. But it's an equation now, so if we add it to the left side, we've got to keep it balanced by adding it to the right side. So technically, we haven't changed anything. If I turn my around and I subtract one from both sides, I'm right back to where I start. We haven't actually changed our equation, we're just manipulating it so that now, we have a perfect square trinomial on the left side. Before, m squared minus 2 and minus 75 is not factorable. Okay, but now we have something that is factorable on the left side. So that is step four. We need to factor the perfect square trinomial. So that left side is m minus 1 squared m minus 1 squared because this was a negative and because we squared 1 that factors into m minus 1 squared and on the right side 75 plus 1 is 76. Okay. Step 5 says take the square root of both sides and don't forget when you take a square root you got to stick a plus or minus in front. Okay, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides because the square root is the opposite of squaring something. So that cancels. We've got m minus 1 on the left side. The square root and that squared cancel. So we've got m minus 1 on the left side is equal to the plus or minus square root of 76. 76 is not a perfect square. If you type the square root of 76 into your calculator, you're going to get a decimal, so we just want to leave it as the square root of 76. In our last step, we're solving for a variable. That's the whole purpose of this. We're trying to figure out what does m equal for that equation to be 0. So we've got to get m by itself by adding 1. Now, this is where people tend to get tripped up. You can't add the 1 inside the square root. So all that happens is we put that 1 in front of that plus or minus square root of 76. Okay, so we add that 1 to get the variable by itself and that positive 1 just goes in front of our square root. Let's check it. Okay, let's check it. That is our answer. That's how I want you to write the answer. But we can see what the decimal value of that would be. 1 plus the square root of 76. I'm going to store that as x so I can check it. So my answer is approximately 
Let's see and make sure that that checks out. Oops, minus 2x minus 75, and that does equal 0. And I could check the negative as well, but if the positive one works, then, um, then the negative one, the 1 minus the square root of 76, works as well. Okay? So, I don't know, you might like this a little bit more than the quadratic formula. The only thing that I don't like about completing the square, solving equations by completing the square, is there's just so much of steps to remember, whereas the quadratic formula, you just have to remember the formula and be able to plug in the numbers. But some of you may be step followers, and, and this works better. Um, it's really not that bad as long as you look at it as a step-by-step -step process, okay? It does take a little bit of space on your page. So my suggestion to you is as you're working with these problems, now we're going to do another example, okay? We are going to do another example. But as you're working these problems, um, I made this portable so you can reuse it. So if you have a piece of paper that you're working on, you can stick your paper inside the yellow and you can just unfold the flaps as you go through the steps and it'll walk you through the problem and you can just keep writing on your other paper, okay? Let's do another one. Let's do number 14 so that you can become a little bit more comfortable with this. Okay, so step one, make sure A equals one, we're good, and move C to the other side. So right now, C is 13, we've got to move that to the other side. So we've got to subtract it from both sides. There's already a number over there, that's okay. We're just gonna combine those numbers then. Leave our blank space for completing the square, 7 minus 13 is negative 6. Don't freak out that that's a negative number. It's probably going to go away here in a minute. Okay? Not always, but usually. Okay? So, what's next? Divide B by 2. B is um, 12. Okay? You can put the negative with it. The only reason why I dropped the negative is so that you don't have to worry about putting parentheses around the number before you square it. So 12 divided by 2 is 6, 6 squared is 36, so that is going to complete our square. We add it to both sides to keep our equation balanced. Okay. Divide b by 2, 12 divided by 2 is 6, square it, that's 36, add it to both sides. Let's factor our perfect square trinomial on the left side. X, it was minus 12, so it's minus. We squared 6, so it's X minus 6 squared. 6 times 6 gives us 36, 6 plus 6 gives us 12. And that is equal to negative 6 plus 36 is 30. Step five, take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. So the square root and the squared cancel. So we've got x minus six is equal to plus or minus square root of 30. 30 is not a perfect square, just leave it under the square root. Last step is get the variable by itself. We're subtracting six, so we need to add six. So we get x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 30. Now, if that had been x plus 6 to begin with, and if this had been a plus right here, we would have had to subtract, so this would be a negative 6 in the answer right here. Okay? I wish that I had done that. I wasn't looking that closely at my examples. Um, but that would be a negative 6 if it had been x plus 6 on the left side. If you subtract it, it would be negative. Okay? Alright. So, I want you to give number 18 a shot. See if you...